Hello everyone, my name is Jo and this is Type 63's Type Talks Tuesdays, where Filipino type creatives talk about letters, projects, and processes every fourth Tuesday of the month. This time, however, we're showing this episode on the second week of December as a season finale of Design Dialogues at Home Season 3, which focuses on typography. If you haven't seen the videos yet, please check them out in the Design Dialogues YouTube page, which we'll link down below. This video series is a collaboration between Type 63 and Design Dialogues at Home with the help of our media partner, Adobo Magazine, The Word on Creativity. Today, I am joined by the guests from this season. We have Aaron Amar, Jad Baza, Adrian Panadero, and Clara Cayosa of End a Half Design Studio, and John Tan of Together We Design. Unfortunately, Ali wasn't able to join us today, but we'll still hear from her later. We also have with us today the incredible team behind Design Dialogues at Home, Kay Aranzanzo, Petra Gana, and Sophie Bautista. I'd like to call on Kay to introduce, us what, uh, to, introduce to us what Design Dialogues is all about. Hi guys. Um, hi, I'm Kay. So I'm the head of the learning arm of End the Half. And together with me is my team, Petra and Sophie. But also, we also have um, Triksha and... Dre and Ada uh, inside the team. So Design Dialogues at Home is one of the initiatives of the ARM and it was um, made as a response to the gaps that we saw in the education and learning opportunities during this pandemic. So after two seasons, um, we wanted to push further the mission of um, Design Dialogues at Home to empower our local designers and we thought the best way to do this is to collaborate with um, design leaders and um, we thought na having typography as the topic of the third season syempre eh, um, naisip namin agad si Jo of Type 63 to collaborate with and it was a perfect partnership <laughs> um, we were able to create content that would allow people, um, our audience, to start on their um, type projects. And um, we discussed in this season um, from conceptualization to execution and uh, presentation and then application of type. So thank you. Thank you, Kay. So it was really uh, wonderful working with the whole Design Dialogues team over the past few months and with our guests as well. I think all of us can agree that it's a wonderful initiative and I'm very honored to have collaborated with you and the rest of the team for this season. So thank you, thank you so much. A lot of people have actually left so many positive reactions, comments, and messages in the Type 63 Instagram and Facebook account. But in our personal account, go whenever I share our posts. So there's really so much to learn about uh, type from each speaker, not only from the technical information that they shared, but also from their own experiences. And I'm sure that a lot of them have more to say. So we'll take this time to allow them to introduce themselves and share with us their top three type tips. We'll begin with Aaron Amar, who started our season with this episode on finding and transforming inspiration for type. So, hi Aaron, take it away. Uh, good day everyone, I'm Aaron Amar, siyempre. Uh, a type designer from Quezon City. What was the thing that you wish you knew before you started? Uh, I wish I knew the essence of uh, making a type before I started, so as the importance and impact of it. Kasi the way I started, ano eh, parang all fun and games lang siya for me. Parang, la, ano, batang naglalaro lang ng building blocks or parang naglalaro ng Legos sa, ano, sa mall, ganun. Pero, also being creatively free. Siguro ang bright side nun is parang uh, walang pressure sa paggawa ng typeface not being critical to, I, to my own work. So parang ang gaan lang siya for me, especially ng mga early days na gumagawa lang ako sa, ano, sa fontstruck.com. So parang 
ayun nga, as a hobby ko lang talaga siya noon. I'm not saying that it's bad, it's bad to do nonsense, nonsense, pero yeah, if I knew that before, siguro mas maganda and mas creative yung mga gawa ko since day one, katulad ng kay Jad niya. What was the most important lesson that you are currently using or would want to pass on? Relating to the topic that I was assigned on, uh, the most important lesson that I want to pass on is to embed a, histor- a story or history or a culture as the inspiration for your typeface for your other design words. Para ano, para hindi naman sa para masabi, pero para talagang may sense din yung and parang may art or may purpose yung paggawa sa typeface more than just building letters aesthetically um, and how you do that is to know how it's done like sa mga signages and how do they draw it sa mga canvas nila and why should should it look like that should it look like that uh, but of course uh Siyempre, di, siyempre, ano, kung gagawa ka ng aesthetic, siyempre, ang readability, hindi dapat makakompromise din. Kasi, the, ano, kung gagawa ka ng typeface, it should be really readable din. Pero, it's, not, ano, it's up to you kung priority, priority mo is yung read, readability ng typeface mo. Mm. What is something you want to learn and more about? Uh, ako, uh, ako kasi medyo nilalaro ko lang pero syempre gusto ko nang maging serious after so more on technical stuff na rin in creating typefaces yung gusto kong explore para sure na ano talaga maayos yung mga gawa ko from ano from this day on and forward and as a curious person I, syempre uh, I will read or watch tutorials and explore more about it yung gusto kong ta- uh, aralin talaga is yung variable type na very helpful siya in creating multiple weights and with for the type once I got the right tool uh, mag-experiment ako about that We got a question from the audience na apart from visual inspiration like say signages are there other things that we can take inspiration from and how can we transform those into guidelines for working on our typefaces? Uh, yes, uh, we can take inspiration from other things. Uh, kahit hindi lang sa mga letters na uh, signages na makikita mo or mga writings na makikita mo somewhere around you. Uh, it doesn't have ano, this, it doesn't have to be ano lang, yung mga ganung bagay lang. Like for example, uh, sa episode 1 ng Design Dialogues with Joe, 'di ba? Uh, she makes let, uh, letter forms using ano, songs. So, f- sa 36 days of type challenge niya, right? And we can also create a concept from a character or person. Like yung kay Ali nga, yung uh, Lady Bird typeface, which is uh, inspired kay sa pelikula nga. And pwede din sa mga physical stuff na that you think are noble or remarkable na talagang mapapakita mo in the form of typeface or pwede rin yung mga intangible things like any abstract nouns you can think of. For example, uh, freedom, uh, liberty, like that. Mm. And to embed the physical objects as your concept for the letter form is to look at the details and make it recognizable and use it as an element. Sa intangible, intangible things naman, uh, kung marunong ka mag-translate ng emotions, thoughts, or sounds into shapes, then use that to build your letters and make a typeface for, out of it. Mm. Alright, thank you Aaron for sharing your answers with us and for always being so game to help out with Type 63 activities. Uh, next up, Aaron actually calls him the rising star of Philippine type design. <laughs> We have Jad Maza, who gave us a good overview of the technical construction of type in his episode. So, hi, Jad. Hello, everyone. I'm John David Maza, a graphic designer and a rookie type designer here in Iloilo. Um, so, uh, my three type tips are 
first, um, what was the thing I wish I knew before I started? Um, I wish I knew na he loved the pen tool a little more kasi I admit working with vectors and illustrator before uh, was a bit awkward uh, para sa akin kasi uh, I often use Photoshop and InDesign and slightly different yung functions and features nila. And given that FontForge yung uh, pinag-umpisahan ko din uh, is a bit closer to Illustrator and nakakalito din. Kaya it was just this summer when I began taking Illustrator seriously that uh, I think I got the hang of it by watching uh, tutorials and practicing hands-on din. Also, I wish I knew about the licensing aspect when I released my first font because I was bombarded with questions um, from from customers or from people who na download the font. Um, like, can this font be used commercially or can we use this on our website? Parang ganun, eh, wala akong masagot. Um, when you come to think of it nga, parang um, as an independent designer ha, you need to take on different roles when doing type design. Like, una-una, mag-design ka na ng typeface. Like, mag-conceptualize ka. Then, gagawa ka ng specimen to present your typeface. Then, mag-set up ka ng shop. Then, mag-promote ka. And, magsusulat ka pa ng legal agreements. You know, uh, it can take a lot of work and can be very overwhelming, especially sa una. Because, uh, I felt that when I started. And, the next uh, type tip, um, what was the most important lesson that you're currently using and would want to pass on? Um, I think the most important lesson is yung building the glyphs piece by piece and saving a copy na pwedeng i-deconstruct. Kasi my tendency before was to uh, merge my shapes um, very early on. Kaya it's a bit tricky to apply even minor adjustments kasi interconnected na yung paths and um, once you move an anchor point um, na nagagalaw yung buong shape. Yeah, yeah. Building the glyphs piece by piece. Then the third would be what is something you want to learn more about? Uh, I'd like to personally learn more about the in-depth technical principles especially ng side bearing spacing at manual turning as well as streamlined processes na experienced type designers use in handling such hurdle. Kasi parang uh, yun yung pinaka mahirap na part ng type design, yung turning. And also, I'd like to learn about um, consistent interpolation para gumawa ng uh, different weights, styles, and italics. Um, uh, font making. What is your advice for people asking where they should start with type design? Are there styles that are good to explore first for beginners that you can recommend? The best place to start is wherever, whenever you're inspired. Kasi, um, when inspiration kicks in, um, parang uh, mar- marami kang ideas, diba? So, you need to sketch and internalize those when they come. After that, um, expand your glyphs and you're ready not to take on the repetitive work. The styles that could be good at first for beginners, uh, I think depende na rin yun sa um, hilig mo or sa style mo. Depende na yun sa'yo. Um, for example, you're into calligraphy, or lettering, you can start by uh, digitizing your your forms into glyphs. Um, then, if you're an illustrator na flat design naman yung style, you can play on shapes naman. Um, basta anything you think you can manage, um, especially if it's uh, personal work like mine, um, you have complete control over your goals, your direction, and how you accomplish them. So there's really no one design to start with. It's really about what your in- where your interests are, and what you can manage at the time. So thank you so much, Jed, for sa- sharing your insights. Uh, and now that we've learned how to make type, another crucial thing for designers to know is how to actually present their work. Like Jed mentioned, you have to think about everything. 
And this was discussed in episode 3 of our series with Ali Kunalan, who wasn't able to join today but has shared with us her top 3 type tips. Hi, I'm Ali Kunanan, a designer and illustrator currently based in Cavite. And my top three type tips are, number one, I wish I became more familiar with the type and technical terms of type design before I started. Since I mostly learned it on my own, I immediately got into the construction part and was just learning the terms along the way. I think it would have been more helpful and my process would have been more efficient if I knew them beforehand. During the production of my first few fonts, I had to Google the terms I encountered along the way. Until now, I still do from time to time. And I guess you never really stop learning in this field. Whatever you pick up along the way will be beneficial for you in the future. Number two, I think the most important lesson I want to pass on, especially to those who um, want to get into type design, is to actually start. Start now, guys. <laughs> there are a lot of resources online, and you don't even need um, a professional design education to be a type designer. Uh, you can start at home just by researching um, looking at inspirations, reading and watching tutorials, etc. You can learn a lot from that already. Another important lesson that I practice every day is to find the time to look at inspirations, sketch possible design ideas, and learn new things. Once you start getting into type design, it would be helpful in the long run if you continuously keep yourself inspired because you can find new ideas anywhere. Number three, what is something you want to learn more about? I want to learn more about the legal and business side of type industry, like how to protect my works from people who might want to copy them and sell them as their own. And of course, to protect myself as a designer by being compensated fairly and properly. Lastly, what do you personally look for in type specimens? Are there certain features of fonts that draw you in? <laughs> personally, I think the design of the deck itself matters a lot since it really does bring out the best in your typeface. And on the other hand, a typeface brings out the best in your design. They really do go hand in hand, so I look for both. The design of the font and the design of the deck. Um, dapat bagay sila, or else the overall look will be compromised. The feature of a font that really draws me in is the curves, because I suck at it the most. Um, when I see a font that has lots of curves and embellishments, natutulala na lang ako. Because in my head, I'm like, paano nyo ginawa yan? <laughs> um, when I'm designing a typeface, I feel like the letter S is the boss fight. Siya yung lagi kong hinuhuli. Because I really don't know how I'm how I'm gonna start with it. Honestly, I just look at the screen for 10 minutes. Because I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to start. <laughs> and that's it. Our episode 4, which was our season ender, was done in two parts. And a few people mentioned the Paradoxian Harry Potter finale because it's two parts. Pa siya. But yeah. we don't have any Death Eaters here, just very talented representatives of design studios. For part one, we had Adrian Padadero and Clara Cayosa of End Half Design Studio, who are both here with us to share their top three type tips. So, hello, I'm Adrian Panadero, and together with Clara, uh, we're representing Enda, and we're a design studio based in Mandaluyong. Um, I think in Enda, just share ko na rin lang, I feel like ingrained sa amin yung paggawa ng type. So, it's also a big honor to sort of represent Enda here. Kasi hindi lang kami ni Clara yung gumagawa ng type sa Enda. So, siguro dun sa una kong type tip ay, yung one thing that I wish I knew before I started, 
I think maka- nakatulong siguro sa akin if I knew that type design is like illustration in a way. Because before, medyo intimidated ako sa kanya. Because before so joining NDAF, I didn't have any background sa type. Parang, I just had to learn it on the spot. Um, but then, when I thought na, uy, parang naghanap din ako ng form na graceful or may rhythm or um, may balance. Parang, it brought me back to my illustration background. So I think if I had known na may similarities naman siya, it would have helped me be more creative and comfortable in creating uh, my first uh, typographic work. Okay, hello. I am Clara Cayosa. I'm also a designer from Indaha. Uh, medyo similar din kami ng sagot ni Adi. Um, and, and for me, I think I lost a valuable amount of time for learning opportunities because I was intimidated by type. So, siguro yung first encounter ko kasi with working with um, types at large was in, in college when we had a typography class. And we were tasked to do a lot of layout, a lot of type design. And parang, um, I, I always felt like kulang ako, kulang yung knowledge na alam ko. Um, and I always felt like I wasn't good enough because I didn't know the technicalities. Like, you have to understand like type isn't just all about being creative, but it's also um, being uh, knowledgeable of the technicalities of creating a letter form. Because, of course, the letter A is a letter A because of certain parameters. And we always have to observe that. And uh, what I felt was like, I ko yung kaba. So, but then I realized like now that I, I was fortunate enough to be part of a mentorship program with Sharp Type. And what I realized is that a lot of a lot of the, a huge chunk of type design is trial and error, meaning that um, parang kapakapa talaga even even people who are really known for it, um, yun yung mga sinasabi sa akin na you always have to just go with your gut feeling um, with type, of course. Because I think we mentioned it on in his in his. Um, in his episode na there are a lot of optical illusions that you have to uh, consider and I think I just was so intimidated by it but you don't have to be intimidated by type parang it's just you just have to do it I think and I, and, and, and personally for me I think I just needed um, a mentor to tell me that na kaya naman siya so yeah. So for me, naman, yung, I think the tip that or lesson that I'm incorporating in my type work right now is that letters are imperfect and fluid. Related then is the sinabi ni Clara when she referenced Jad na maraming optical illusions sa type. And before kasi nyo nagsustart ako gumawa ng type, parang obsessed ako to making things perfect. But then you find out that letters become letters that we know of because of certain quirks or certain um, details na um, hindi naman to pantay doon, pero parang kaya siya naging letter kasi hindi siya pantay. Yung mga ganong bagay. And, um, syempre, of course, nandun yung, uh, there's the geometry and mathematics of it all. But then I feel like uh, letters become carriers of meaning when you, uh, you know, inject your gut into it and make sure na uh, fluid siya kahit pa paano. Like, bar all the geometry and math of creating typography. For me, um, I think it's it's instilling this whole idea of type. Na typeface is a series of patterns spread. Uh, designing a typeface is a series of patterns spread across the alphabet. Uh, because again, hindi pwede na maganda lang yung isang letter, pero yung iba uh, I, I think that's 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 what's tricky with doing uh, with designing a typeface is that you're designing a collection. Of letters, and you want to make sure na hindi bida bida yung isa. Kailangan laging parang isipin mo yung context kung saan siya gagamitin. Gagamitin siya to to represent letters and words and 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 there mo- most of the time there are there are a lot of words and so you always have to consider na may rhythm lagi yung letters mo. Um, Kasi fonts are used as a whole. I think I'm more... May ano rin naman to eh. May mga school of thought to in type design na. Some people prefer to go like the display and like parang 
per letter um, design, which is also great. But I think I'm more leaning towards that whole um, uh, idea of type being uh, a collection of uh, it's a beautiful collection of letters, not a collection of beautiful letters. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a that one. <laughs> Uh, for me naman siguro um yung mas gusto ko pa matutunan ay kerning and shading balance between characters and making an actual typeable font basically yung technicalities kasi with para font i think yung um kinaganda ng working with the team is there are people to uh to take on different tasks so for para font yung nag-intro ng kerning ay si Clara si Trixia yung numbers naman ay yung isa naming teammate si BJ so ngayon naman yung gusto ko matutunan is yung integrity na no na para uh, in the future ay ako naman yung pwedeng kumuha ng task na yon to actually make it a typeable font and make sure na malinis at maayos yung kerning and yung balance between all the characters for me naman what is something i would like to learn more about i think it's to explore uh what makes a typeface look filipino and this might sound such like a uh, this might sound like a very high bro idea to some, but uh, this is what draws me to um, further exploring the world of type. Uh, it's the same way how and I mentioned this naman in the video, or maybe I didn't. I did not scrap that. Di pala siya nasama sa final edit. But uh, similar to how Din looks very German, or how Kathleen is like considered to be peculiarly English. Uh, parang, if we were to design a Filipino-looking font, like, what would it look like? And I'm sure, like, there are a million, like, there are a lot of factors to, um, to that you should consider to, you uh, know, to uh, create this like, overall this huge idea. Uh, but I think, parang, there's so many possibilities, especially in the Philippines. I mean, we've seen it in the works of Aaron, of John. Mm. Um, even para para font is high. It's heavily inspired by our culture, and I really want to push that further. Um, what else can we make uh, apart from jeepney jeepney fonts, um, hand painted signs? Segue to another thing I want to do uh, that's type related is I want to work beyond digital type design like i want to start using uh, i want to start um hand lettering and probably engraving just to uh ba? just to parang really dive in into like the thought process of creating uh, a letter form and it's also a challenge for me because i'm left-handed so mahirap matagal na akong nahihirapan with calligraphy and yeah, hand lettering, chalk art. Yeah, I'm not in the realm because I'm left-handed, but I really want to push that uh, for for myself. So. Okay, thank you so much. Um, since you also you mentioned earlier, Adina, when you work on Parafont, and actually when you work in and the half, you work as a team. So, mm -hmm. do you have any tips on what to include in your proofs or specimen samples for checking your typeface? And how do you actually go about it when you're checking it? Like, since it's a collaborative e effort, parang how do you discuss corrections among yourselves din sa team niyo? Um, siguro, I think with any work naman na ginagawa namin sa and half, and this is directly tied to our uh, previous office setup, no, obviously, wala na. Um, <laughs> is that very open siya. So anybody could just peek dun sa ginagawa ng bawat isa. Mm. Um, and from afar, kita mo yung ginagawa ng lahat ng tao. So parang um, the physical layout sort of encouraged that uh, open uh, environment of giving feedback. But siguro, uh, let's say, for para, uh, we just, I guess, approach it in a more... Um, open sort of manner na parang since we were all sort of just um, learning on the on the job learning along the way parang naging open lang kami makarinig ng iba't ibang feedback and comments and siguro nakakatulong doon is let's say if you print your ano your your type your specimen para uh, makita mo siya na nakalatag ma-compare mo sa screen anong itsura so that does help but siguro um, in a more team setting maganda yung um, you you give comments in you know in an open environment and just 
keep in mind that it's for the betterment of project, no matter what it is. But in this case, the type, it's for the pagkaganda ng pante ginagawa. For me, um, sige, siguro sa sagutin ko in a more technical manner, like for obviously you'd have to include mga sample text, right? Uh, to see nga how your letters like look like uh, look when they're all together and i'd recommend like there are a lot of resources for proof text online mm-hmm. i know hefler has also on their website and they he talks very extensively on as to why he uses this particular proof text and maganda yun kasi makikita mo yung um yung different permutations of each letter and uh, with permutations of different letter combinations and so um Yun. Uh, second, I think um, una, syempre pag gumagawa ng typeface, kailangan mo rin isipin nga na there are also essentially a bunch of letters. Essentially, you're working with shapes when you create letters. And so when you start proofing, when you start your proofing, um, it's good to start with the circle and the shape form. And usually in an alphabet, that's the H and the O. And that's where you start sampling all your letters. Like, you lagay mo siya dun sa in between two H's, two O's, and then an H and an O. So dun mo makikita kasi kung sakto yung spacing or hindi. Um, again, nasabi naman ni Adi to earlier, uh, you should be very open to feedback, uh, especially uh, from people not within your circle, uh, but people who like ordinary people like who aren't just who aren't designers kasi baka may nakikita sila na hindi mo na nakikita kasi you've been working on the type for so long. Uh, another one is to ano, follow mo yung kutob mo. Nasabi na namin ko kanina pero it's like you really have to follow the yung counterintuitive and idiosyncratic ways of um, creating a letter letter face a letter face letter form. So uh, maraming times na you get into this dilemma na parang shock should i keep this or should i should should i mm. should i retain this design or should i change it um ang isang tip na nabigay rin sa akin ay you should be ready to kill your babies <laughs> na parang again like you really have to consider nga na kailangan yung buong collection maganda hindi yung letter C mo lang or letter S lang yung maganda. Kailangan like isang font family pa rin siya. Um, and so, that's, that's really part of the that's really part of the process of creating a type na you have to be ready to kill your great ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, yun. Because again, type is not a collection of nice letters. It's a nice collection of letters. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Clara and Adi. So, di talaga pwedeng may bidabidang letters in a whole font family. And di rin pwedeng may bidabidang designers. Depende sa yun. <laughs> <laughs> when working with yeah, a depende team. Naman. True, depende talaga. But yeah, uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights. And finally, we have John Tan of Together We Design who shared their studio's process in creating their variable font called Bowel Fans in part two of the last episode. Hi, John. So, hi, I'm John Tan, a partner and designer at Together We Design. And to share my three tips and, I guess, personal learnings na rin. So, first, um, I think it's very handy to know your uh, type resources. Nung nagsistart, siguro kasi ako mag- mag-design medyo mahirap makahanap ng type resources, mga reading materials, yung mga quick digestible um, terms and kumbaga processes when when creating a typeface. Lalo na kung like a complete workable font yung gusto mong magawa. So, right now, thankful ako kasi mas mabilis nang maka- matuto. So, bilis nang makahanap ng mm. uh, lessons, ng tips. Yeah, thank you, Jad, kasi dami <laughs> mong na-share na resources. Uh, 
So yun, but other than that, it's a constant learning and relearning for me every time I start a type project since hindi naman ito yung parang it's not, it's not something I do every day. So every time may bago kaming um, type project, parang bago siya. Kasi bukod sa may bagong requirement, kailangan ko ulit i-relearn yung mga uh, natutunan ko dati, kailangan ko matuto ng bago. So I think it's always a new experience for me um, when creating a typeface. Uh, second tip or personal insight is walang perfect na typeface. It's really about the context and how you use it. Um, so marami fonts, di ba? Pero in, I don't think na masasabi natin na may maling font or may may sobrang pangat na font na hindi mo na siya magagamit. Um, it really depends on how you use it, ano yung context ng pinaggamitan mo. I guess yung perfect example dito yung Comic Sans. Kung hindi nila, kung hindi yan ginamit para sa isang company logo na, for example, may company logo na gumamit ng Comic Sans, tapos seryoso siya, law firm, hindi hmm. mali yun. Pero kung ginamit mo siya in a comic, in a comic strip, hindi perfect siya doon. Si Comic Sans na eh. So, <laughs> kumbaga, walang, 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 walang perfect. So, as a designer, um, I think it's your job to find the right typeface for the job. As a as a type designer, naman, it's um, your job, I guess, to put in context to sa ginagawa mo typeface para magamit siya ng tama. It's something that I want to learn more about. So, ito yung type technicality siguro in line with my first tip. Um, I really want to learn more about yung mga specific um, technicalities when creating letter forms. Siguro yung mga sinishare ni Jan dun sa sa uh, type 63 dito sa design dialogues natin, yun, kailangan ko matutunan yun. Yung mga, yung mga natututunan ni Clara sa, sa inaaral niya ngayon, yun, yun yung mga bagay na uh, it's not something that parang hindi, hindi siya madali. Tama si Clara, medyo intimidating siya kasi parang ang daming new terms, ang daming super small details and at first parang feel mo oh bakit hindi tama yung um, side bearing ko hindi tama yung turning ko etc and very intimidating na matutunan yung lahat lalo na if you think about um, yung permutation ng ng na letters kung pa yung di ba parang kila daming permutation ng letters and glyphs and then lahat yon mayroong parang may rule ba yon I, I can't really say kasi di 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 pa na ako dive deep into the technicalities of it but it's something I really want to know more um, para mas aral yung gagawin ko project in the future okay thank you John ganda nung sinabi mo din sa second question na uh, when you answered it na in terms of context na as type designers it's really our role to provide type that can be used as a voice in communicating an idea and in your case i'm very curious in together we design uh, how has your experience been working with clients when presenting them custom typefaces do they already know or understand what a custom typeface is or you know kasi parang in my case personally when i work in the studio Parang some of them still, some of our clients still don't understand what a custom typeface is, and sabi nila usually, why do we need to create a new typeface? Can't we just download the font online? Yung mga ganon, which is very valid naman in their case. So I'm wondering if have you encountered the same things in Together We Design, na in terms of client relations, I guess, and presenting them custom type. How has your experience been? Yeah, so for us, yung custom typeface kasi hindi siya yung parang um, first 
parang hindi hindi namin siya offer immediately. Mm. Um, syempre when branding projects happen uh, during the development phase, parang dun mo lang realize na ah okay, maganda nga siguro if gawa natin siya ng uh, sarili niyang typeface or gawa natin siya ng at least a custom type logo type man lang. Uh, so, for us, medyo bonus siya eh for the client na after ng development phase, after ng concept board, syempre, ang initial namin dun na, na recommendations is pwede ito yung mga fonts na gamitin natin. Hmm. Pero, at the back end kami, ah, baka pwede natin siya malaro. Baka pwede hmm. gumawa tayo ng um, sarili niya typeface. Hindi namin siya sinasabi sa start kasi over-promising yun eh. <laughs> diba? Eh, paano kung hindi namin, paano kung hindi matapos? Kasi ma-complicated eh. Or, that is kaya parang for us, uh, maraming, uh, parang gamble siya. Parang gamble siya whenever we we recommend or present a typeface. Mm-hmm. So, before kami mag-start, uh, we really make sure na gusto namin yung client gusto namin yung concept, gusto namin yung project para pag ginawa na namin yung typeface um, or custom type, uh, masaya kami gawin. Masaya kami gawin. So in a way, uh, personal, very personal lahat ng custom typefaces namin kasi hindi kami gumawa ng uh, typeface na hindi kami nakaka-relate to. So, nandun yung gamble na um, what if hindi niya magustuhan? Mm-hmm. Pero yun, pag nangyari, pag hindi niya nagustuhan, okay lang kasi meron kaming bagong typeface na pwede namin tapusin. Yeah. Paano ko, pero yung mas mahirap na question is, paano kung nagustuhan niya, pero sobrang dami niyang comments, tapos mm-hmm. gusto niya sobrang daming cliffs, sobrang dami niyang arte na gusto pang ilagay. Mm-hmm. Tapos hindi rin pala niya babayaran. Oh no. Di, wala ad cost. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Kasi technically, pag ipapresent namin yun and gusto niya buong uh, typeface yung gagawin and gusto niya malipat lahat ng rights sa business niya, technically, ad cost na siya. Mm-hmm. So, may mga ganong uh, technical business uh, parang repercussions rin or gamble on our part. But so mm-hmm. far, okay naman lahat ng mga nagawa namin ko sa typeface. Uh, masaya naman kami with it. Mm-hmm. And I think masaya rin naman clients with it. So, yun. I'm sure. Okay, that's great. Uh, it's really something that's parang in between a personal project pa for Together Redesign and the client project parang it's running between those two. So, it's really yes. nice to hear na Wala, interesting lang na nandun pa tayo. And then yung situation natin ngayon because it's kind of similar than to ours when we work on custom typefaces mm-hmm. for clients. So it, I wonder if if and when it's going to change. Um, and ho- I think it's going to the direction na parang soon we're going to be able to introduce really Filipino fonts. Tulad nga yung sinabi ni Clara parang and yung mga pinaproduce nila Aaron and Jad. A lot of people right now are learning more about Philippine type design and it's an exciting time to be in honestly. And ayun, sobra exciting lang niya and I'm very um, privileged to go through this with all of you guys. Uh, yeah. So throughout the season it was so nice hearing and seeing about the design community's interest and enthusiasm in type design, which brings us to the bigger questions about the growing relevance of type in the Philippine design scene. And we'd like to know our speakers' take on this. So anyone can answer and then others can jump in with their own opinion or even questions for our main questions for today. So the first question is, what is the importance of type in Philippine graphic design? Anyone? Uh, may I answer? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, you may. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for that thank question. Thank you for that wonderful question. Uh, <laughs> I think because type serves to visualize culture. It serves to mm. visualize meaning. And I think ang practice ng Philippine graphic design lagi nandiyan tanong na 
what is Filipino? What is a singular Filipino look? Maganyan. Um, but I think we have to remember that a singular look or a singular identity um, is constructed. It's formed. Hindi siya, parang, it's not as organic because in that process, you're sort of weeding out kung sino yung kasama at sino yung hindi. And I think ang kinaganda ng Filipino type ngayon is that we're seeing all the possible ways to show what Filipino is. And um, like, for example, yung typography that's available, that nakikita natin, nakikita niya yung uh, mga iba't ibang mga part ng languages natin na, let's say, hindi na natin nakikita. Like, for example, tong tuwa ko sa ginawa ni Jad na meron siyang character for the schwa sound, um, yung eh uh, na sound. Kasi I think sa Kinaraian, nandun siya, di ba? But then nandun din siya sa Miranao or sa Bicolano, um, yung eh uh, na sound. And I think sa Ilocano, meron din. So yung mga ganung bagay, exciting because I uh, now open your possibilities to visualize all these different cultures that even though diverse, even though magkakaiba, it's all part of being Filipino. And I think um, it just serves to show na the quest for this sort of identity um, shouldn't necessarily stop at a uniform look, but instead a collection of uh, different looks, mm. different cultures that typography can visualize. Thank you, Adi. I really love that very scholarly answer of yeah. <laughs> diving into what makes a culture a culture and if it's singular or what makes up a culture. So it's really, those are really important things to consider when creating typefaces. Nga. So anyone else who has... Yung sa akin, gusto ko lang i-add dun sa sinasabi ni Adi na um, yun nga eh, parang I think feel na maraming Pinoy na may identity crisis yung pagiging Filipino. Um, pero by the sheer fact na archipelago tayo, marami talaga identity. Yeah. Tapos idagdag mo pa doon yung ilang, ilang different countries yung sumakop sa bansa natin. So just imagine yung, yung permutations ng culture na yun. Um, even nga uh, in language, eh, kanina na banggit mo na may gumagamit mga schwa sound. Ang um, interesting nga rin malaman um, na, for example, may, may, may term na bisakol. Kasi, kunya, yun, dun sa province ng mom ko, sa Irusen, Sorsogon, pinaghalo mm. na yung bicol tsaka bisaya. Kaya bisak, mm. <laughs> parang bisakol na yung, yung, yung tunog niya. So, ang daming permutations and I think lahat yun part siya ng history part ng culture ng Philippines. So, I think it's really um, nice na uh, siguro maisulat or magkaroon ng pansin yung uh, iba-ibang culture na yun, specifically mm-hmm. on type. Kasi heavily westernized yung practice ng gra- mm-hmm. graphic yeah. design sa Philippines. Eh. So, yun. Magandang ma- ma-highlight rin natin. It's very true. Yeah. Clara? Maganda yung sinabi ni Bit. Um, parang, uh, I think as a, as a nation, parang we always have the tendency nga to localize everything that we uh, learn from other countries. And parang, na, Adi is able to encapsulate naman like the whole like Philippine graphic design type design um like idea and so I'm not really gonna delve into that but I think what I wanted to say was like in terms of um, creating or defining Philippine type or graphic design even uh, nakikita ko siya as an opportunity to explore kasi um, I, I had the I had the op- uh, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to learn um the process of how they do type design in America and in Paris. See, you meant this coming good. Um, and they've been following the same set of rules since for like years. Like mm. yung yung mga mentors nila, like matagal na rin tong ginagawa. So meron na silang way of thinking and way of doing things. Na fortunately tayo, parang we can obviously learn from them. But we can also 
make our own rules. Like there's yeah. like, parang the like sad na I mean sorry not sad. Um, tech design kasi is starting palang here. Um, parang ngayon lang siya nagigay ng traction in the Philippines and yung um and I see that as an opportunity for us to really explore and like experiment and like push boundaries. I mean like even na. Like I was thinking about it, even our alphabet, the Filipino alphabet, it's not just 26 letters. Like, diba we consider yung nang, yung NG, saka NY, to be part of the letters. I mean, that alone, like, differentiates us from um, all all these other Western countries um, doing type. And, yun, parang, uh, we, we can learn from them, but we can also just like, Make our own set of sets mm. of rules, and it doesn't have to be again a singular thing. It doesn't have to be like okay, like this is the the this is this is it. This is Philippine graphic design where like in this country, parang I'm in Luzon. It's like the, our our city here is super different um, compared to say Cebu or mm. uh, Davao in in Mindanao. So. Ayun, parang experiment lang feel ko at this point um, for Philippine type design. And I think, I know, we're on the right track naman. Mm-hmm. Aaron and Jad. Yeah, Jad. Just to support lang yung thought na the Philippines being uh, uh, the most linguist, one of the most linguistically diverse na nations sa buong mundo. And type being the visual manifestation of language, diba? Mm. So, I think ta- uh, Philippine graphic design uh, can help highlight and embrace that aspect uh, 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 in our culture na marami tayong language through type. Diba? True, very true. That's why Maragsa is really good parang gateway into learning diacritics and um, I just want to add to that because I've had the experience then of uh, having my mentor check my proofs and stuff tapos she told me na oh you're Filipino you must know a lot about diacritics so lang ako not really <laughs> so <laughs> uh, pero yun tapos parang pumasok talaga unang-unang talaga yung typeface na pumasok ko yung maragsa it's re- it was really one of the it was a really good representation of those different types of languages in our country. And parang, yun nga sabi rin ni Clara na parang there's, we can do things differently. We don't really necessarily have to follow the, not the man templates, but the other things that other countries are doing. We can set our own limitations. We can, not even limitations, but we can set our own parameters. We can explore other things. Like yun nga, working with diacritics, working with language, and taking inspiration from not only the language, but also in different visual aspects, like the mga ginawa ni Aaron na typefaces na mostly based on hand-painted signs and really have a rich, diverse, um, not just one culture, but we have so many things to get from in, uh, to get inspiration from here in the Philippines. And it's so exciting to start, not start, but continue type design knowing all of these things. Aaron, you want to add? Ayan. Uh, ano lang naman. Um, medyo pang Miss Universe na answer na rin. <laughs> parang <laughs> ano, syempre ang, yun na lang, parang, this is, for, ano, for me, nangyari, ang role ko lang is a type designer. So parang, ang, ang role na rin yun is to help ng mga kapwa natin na graph designers to achieve their, um, na design na kunyari for example is kailangan Filipino aesthetic talaga yung need nila for this type of design so parang in the concept it's like ano for me it's like bayanihan na rin na you I do this so others can do that so parang yeah. ganun and uh, additional na rin sa ano parang sa nakikita ni Clara sa iba pa sana nakikita ko na rin na uh, online na others uh, uh other design uh design firms na rin uh, katulad niya na rin na mga, uh, where you were where you were working on na uh, gumagawa na rin ng custom type for branding and 
ang dream ko lang din na is na makaka-catch up na rin tayo sa ganung style ng pag paggawa ng mga identity for the brands and sa mga clients na rin natin. Hmm. That's true. And here in our small Zoom meeting pa nga lang, we have a mix of not only type designers but graphic designers as well. So it's also part of our responsibility, I guess, to continue using uh, our Philippine-made typefaces in our graphic design works. And we're trying to start with that. And when you scroll through Instagram, I see a lot of brands using your fonts, Aaron, and Jad's fonts. And just the other day, si Bits kachat ko, sabi niya, uy, ginamit na naman ng sandwich yung bowel stands. So, parang ako, it's happening! So, sobrang exciting niya. And it's a good segue to our next question na, how do you answer this now? What is your role as a graphic design, as a type designer, not just in the Philippines, but in general? What do you think is your role? It's a loaded question na, Um, when I try to explain it to non-designers, uh, yung una-unang ibabato sa akin is, so gumagawa kang letters? It's parang, essentially, yeah. But there's so much more to unpack. And I'm sure meron kayong mga personal takes, meron din kayong takes that came from your mentors or your bosses. So I'd really like to hear from you kung ano yung role, yung tingin yung role ninyo as a type designer. Meron na, so good. Okay. Um, Go siguro coming from a graphic designer's perspective or even a brand, yeah. branding and design studio, um, a type designer, siya yung parang bridge or para invisible link in between the copywriter and graphic designer. So, copywriter <laughs> or writer or sinong, kahit sinong tao na nag-isip ng isang idea. Kasi hin- hindi mo visualize yung idea mo kung hindi mo siya nasulat or hindi siya mag-visualize kung hindi mo siya na-type sa computer or kusan man. So, yung type designer yung um, nag nagbibigay sa iyo ng platform para maisulat at ma-record yung sinabi mo or yung idea mo i guess yun yung parang explanation na oh gumagawa kami ng letters pero kung hindi mo hindi namin ginawa yung letters pa paano mo masusulat yun sa computer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so try yung so it a good type designer siguro siya yung responsible for our ideas to be properly visualized and contextual and contextualized mm. uh, so yun so parang siya yung first layer of visual clothing ng naisip mo idea yeah clara siguro parang to add to uh, what bit uh, just said Uh, madali kasing i-reduce yung type designer to ah, so gumagawa ka lang ng pod. And parang that, that, that takes me a bit sometimes kasi parang there's so much thought put in, in, a, in, a, in a series of letters and fonts are made in years like like a year or two hindi siya, hindi siya pwedeng mabilisan kasi again Um, like what I said in the video, parang sometimes hindi ka na nakikita kung ano yung mali, kung ano yung inconsistent. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm saying is like there's just a lot of thought, effort, and time spent into creating letter forms. And siguro ako, on a, my, my personal note, like I think me, my role as a graphic and type designer is to uplift our industry, to push it, like in this in this country kasi parang and dali siya i-reduce hindi kasi siya seen as like a profession mm-hmm. uh, the same way that people look up to lawyers and doctors engineers parang i never thought i was going to be a graphic designer but here i am and i really love it and i i feel bad when um nakakawala ng gana when my people assume because my parents are both lawyers they always assume na Oh, I'm gonna go to law, and then ah, uh, oh, you're a lawyer, and then I go, no, I'm actually a graphic designer. They're like, 
so you just make design like so you just you know lay out and, and, and parang siguro like gusto kong i-push you na like it's 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 this whole industry that we're doing is there's some craftsmanship na involved in in type in graphic design and as a Filipino type designer parang I think we should further the the importance of what you do and so that um ma makita din ng mga tao na like the attention to detail is something that we have to have to imbibe imbibe as a country I always say ano eh parang yung 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 name Filipino it's Pili and Pino like why can't we bring back the Pino and in in what we do uh, kasi parang barabara na at this point eh and and people don't respect uh, or see creatives as like profession uh, as a as professional so that's I think our role as Filipino type designers mm-hmm. Jad? I think the role of man. <laughs> Come on, go with that. Ganda. <laughs> ano ko? <laughs> Sige, go lang, go lang. Um, yung role ng uh, type design. Um, a role of a type designer is, um, di ba? Like we can communicate a message naman. It's okay. Alam ko lang yung tinatawa mo lang yun. Or include that in the post. So lang dyan. Okay. Okay. So, di ba, um, uh, when communi- uh, communicating a message, um, pwede naman tayo mag-communicate ng message through uh, like graphic design, through art, pero yung type design kasi is a literal na communication ng message niya like a through readable na um, readable na uh, entity or something na um, para hindi siya ma misunderstand pero actually kahit may letters na siya may uh, readable na substance na yan um, pwede pa rin siya ma misunderstand ng viewer if malit yung type design de ba Like a uh, role of a type designer is to provide options na makaka amplify ng message na um ano nga na um na sakto sakto doon sa message na literal message kasi iba yung vibe na 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 binibigay ng each uh, type din eh and kasi design and art di ba iba din um design is Uh, needs to be functional kasi end role din ng type designer yun na mag-provide ng functional na fonts na magagamit. So. Yep. yep. For me naman, parang just to echo uh, what other people have said, na parang we're helping people express themselves na parang um, alam mo yun, may options ka to, parang kang sinutulungan mo sila mag-communicate nang hindi face to face parang pag gusto mo sumigaw mm-hmm. gumamit ka ng gantong font pang gusto yeah. mong um, delicate ibang font naman pero pag friendly pero sturdy parang ano ba yun uh, trying to capture different personalities and parang you know they say sometimes na eh kasi siguro pag sa gumagawa ng font di ba ang daming technicalities na adjust adjust mo yung minute details and minsan parang hindi mo kinakain ka na ng computer screen but for me mm-hmm. minsan pag din design ng type lalo na is very human because yun nga you're trying to encap encap different personalities different ways of expressing yourself and i think when you dial it down parang ganun eh we're helping others communicate the best way they can mm-hmm. it's very true yes clara uh, i i think siguro to note lang din when you said like Filipino type designers, not just in the Philippines but in general, like in the world. Like I think I just wanted to highlight that type design is very global. Meaning, when you release a font on the <laughs> internet, your audience isn't just the Philippines. Even if your mm. type was like 
like inspired by the Philippines or by our culture. Once you put it out there, anyone in the world can get True. it. And that's what I've noticed with you know, this year because it was year of type for me. And I joined countless like type conferences. And what I realized is like it's it's a very international um, industry. Because in, 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 in my case, as a graphic designer working on brands, a lot of it is based here in the Philippines. A lot of it has to be contextualized in um, the Filipino audience. And for type, like you can, you can focus on that. But once you put it out there in the world, like ev- anyone can get it. And I think that's a, parang just a good thing to note in our heads. Na, um, yun, ang daming, ang daming pwedeng puntahan ng type mo. Once, once you release it uh, online or anywhere you want to, yun. Ayun, like Maragsa being used by a K-pop group now. <laughs> <laughs> See, like they, they, it's so exciting. Like, this is mm. great, and especially now actually, like I think for aspiring type designers, like that's one thing to take advantage of. All the conferences are online, um, and like. You can join them, like, because uh, uh, I think as of now, parang wala pang masad, wala pang dedicated course for type design locally in the Philippines. And so, kung wala yun, you can always find other places who have who, who offer. And and a lot of it is online now. So you nakita ng silver lining talaga in this pandemic, it's like, wala na yung wala na yung limitations of like mm. learning and. Type being an international, like it has a very global, global centric um, industry. Parang that's something to take advantage of. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, idadag ko lang sa mga sinabi nila. Uh, na ang na ang nakatuwa lang as a type designer, you can do art and design in one na din eh. Yun nga. So, mm. parang in terms of typography na rin, so, you create, uh, di ba, ano, parang it's like a visual poetry na rin. Or, na, nakakatulong din sa mga, for for expressing, uh, yeah, for expressing, uh, in like, uh, like doing an artwork. Uh, especially for me, na, uh, kunyari, uh, I, oh, hindi ako, hindi ako masalita, hindi ako mar- mahaba magsulat in few words, pero you can express it in another way using mm. a type design, a, using a font or a type, uh, custom type talaga. So, yun. It's, ano, it's two roles, it's like two roles in one. Uh, in terms of design and art na rin. True. But yeah, it's ano. really one way to express yourself. And gusto kong uh, mag-add ng something personal to that sa sinabi ni Aaron kasi I really never considered myself an artist ever since. So I really boxed myself into design. And But when I started creating typefaces, mas doon ako naging expressive with myself. Weird, weirdly, kahit na sobrang daming rules ng type design, parang doon ko pa siya mas Ewan ko, nagamit as an art form for myself then. So, that's so true na it's really something that you can use to express yourself and to represent um, an expression that you want to push forward. So, thank you so much to everyone. I think it's really important for us to note that design shouldn't just be boxed into creating posters or typefaces. It exists as part of a bigger design system that can be used to create or fix things in our society. It can bring attention to them and it can even push and champion our culture. And type definitely plays a huge role into that. So thank you so much to everyone who is doing their part in pushing for Philippine type design. Uh, so with this, we will wrap up our discussion. So again, nakailang thank you na ako. But truly, I really thank everyone to all of our speakers, to the Design Dialogues team, and to Adobo Magazine for being so generous with all of your knowledge and your time and your resources. Personally, I've learned so much from all of your videos and our interactions online. So I truly believe, wow, that the future is bright for a creative community that is not scared to educate people and celebrate talent. 
And I look forward to seeing more of your work and meeting all of you in person once the pandemic finally ends. Hopefully, magkaroon na tayo ng in-person type events. And in the future, definitely magkakaroon ng mga yan. So before we say goodbye, we have a few announcements and things that we want to promote. So um, ongoing pa rin ang mga typefaces natin on sale. So there is... Aaron has like a huge roster of typefaces. You can check out his Behance and his Instagram. Ganun din si Jad. And um, there's Parafont from End the Half and Bawal Sands from Together We Design. And I think Jad just ended his donation drive for Kawingan, right? So, hindi naman mo wala si Kawingan. It's still gonna be up for sale. So, hopefully, we can all support that. And um, what else? We still have Ladybird from Ali, who is not here. It's up on type Ooh. department, so everyone can buy it. And stay tuned for new font releases. Perlas by Clara Cayosa is coming this January. So I'm personally very excited for that. And another thing to announce, um, finally my website na ang Together We Design. Yay. So please check out together.ph. And uh, congratulations yeah. together. My, my site. And then you free Bawal Sands. Okay, so, so we can you download can check the story Bawal there. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, ayun. Again, thank you. This is Type 63's Type Talks Tuesdays, the season finale for Design Dialogues at Home, Season 3 Typography. Bye!